My name is Hardik Singh, and I'm a product manager at Heavy Robotics. In this video, I will cover a few live demos that show how all the different concepts we've talked about come together. Let's start by looking at the teach repeat example. Let me pull it up right here. So what we're already doing is having the arm support its own weight in what we call gravity compensation or graph comp. What it's doing there is that it, it's, it's recognizing each of its joint angles. It's, it's recognizing its kinematic orientation in the current position right now. And it is accordingly accommodating for its own weight by commanding the necessary torques at each level so that it's not heavy to pick it up. I can very easily move it up and around. So that already is doing a lot of the, uh, putting together a lot of the things that we've talked about earlier in terms of getting the feedback and calculating the kinematics and dynamics. But let's talk a little bit more specifically. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna explain the full system of what's going on here. So I hold the arm, arm here. And when I hold the, hold the arm here, I record its positions. What that means is that all of the positions uh, for each of these joints has been recorded as what we like to call a singular waypoint. I move it over here and I record those joint positions again. Now, I can add a third one, I can add a fourth one, or I can move to start playing them back. Uh, what that shows is, when I told it to go to its first position, what it did was it calculated from the position where I was holding it, and it created smooth trajectory profiles, once again, talking about the, the different trajectories that we wanted earlier, that we mentioned earlier, and it create, created a profile for it to move, a motion profile for it to move from where it was earlier to where it is now. Now, with this uh, additional click of the space bar, it's going to move through the three different waypoints, continuously replanning each time it's getting to one point. So let's say it gets to this waypoint. It then says, OK, I have these new positions I need to go to. And so I'm going to map out what I need to do to get there, uh, do the appropriate forward kinematics to figure out what my new end effective position is, if needed, and uh, command the necessary position, torque, and veloc uh, velocity commands acceleration commands as well to, to get where I want to be next. It's also putting in the appropriate uh, minimum jerk conditions that we mentioned in our, in our uh, trajectory videos to make sure that this motion is smooth, controlled, and um, recognizable. This is a good example of how you can combine the feedback command as well as some of our trajectory generation, inverse kinematic, and forward kinematics um, API tools uh, to, to create a motion altogether. And so, uh, it wasn't like pre-programmed, I didn't tell it joint positions, but I could actually teach it live as I went through. Next, we can actually use another demo to show how a lot of these components come together. And this one will be called the AR kit, where AR stands for augmented reality. And what we're kind of doing here is, uh, is, is we are going to take the position and the orientation of my phone over here and feed it as input to the arm so that it copies and follows the motion that I'm making with my phone. So the best way to see this is to see it in action. But what I'm going to be doing here is that I'm going to have the end effector here, actually at the top of this, uh, at the end of my actuator here, follow what I do with my phone over here. So if I move my phone up, the arm follows. And as I move my phone down, the arm follows. I can do a lot more with this. I can turn uh, around. I can look up. I can look down and I can tune this to be better. So here I am looking at the camera and here I'm going to return to where I was earlier. And the, the important thing to note here, and I'm going to cut the demo here, is that as I was moving the phone around, the arm was actively replanning. So it was doing the, the full, it was using the full set, full set of tools that we've talked about today uh, and over the course of our different videos. Uh, as the phone was moving around, it was noting changes in the position and orientation of the phone, and it was mapping that to the end effector. From there, it, knew, it was using inverse kinematics to figure out what the necessary new joint positions were for these modules to move to. Using our trajectory generator, it mapped from our current positions to the new positions, and from there, it commanded those positions and used forward kinematics to assign a new end effector position uh, for the arm to move to. And this was doing, it was doing this in every control, in every iteration of the control loop, actively replanning to make sure that the input from the mobile IO device was uh, reflected uh, by the arm. In the grand scheme of things, this is, a, this is just one demo to show how it, the different tools that we've talked about in our videos can be used to do really anything you want. 
uh, with, when it comes to motion control. And once again, this is not restricted to just arms. I could use my phone to provide input to mobile base, uh, to a legged robot, or really any kind of system you could imagine. And these principles of trajectory generation, applying forward, inverse kinematics will all come together to help you get that motion control. If you want to do sophisticated uh, machine learning, reinforcement learning, or uh, AI research, or even applications, th this is all it all integrates into the same core uh, set of tools, which really vary from taking simple positions and applying sophisticated tools on top of that to create the desired motion control that you want. So this is just a quick flavor of two demos here that uh, are examples of how you can put together a variety of different motion control techniques to get the desired motion control you want from your robot.